So, we're here to talk about ethics and fashion. So, just to give you a little bit of background on fashion, which is obviously a very, very profitable industry, and I'm sure that's partly why you're all here. Uh, the world trade in clothing was worth about $276 billion in 2005, and in the UK, where we're based, uh, the clothing market is worth around £32.9 billion, pounds, so it's quite a lot of money. But the way we see it, a lot of this is actually based on a very false economy, a lot of this, and an increasing amount is actually what we would say cheap fashion. In the UK, it's just been estimated that about one pound out of every four pounds goes to the so-called value retailers, uh, cheap clothes, basically. So is this really a problem? Is it good that everyone can access clothes and fashion for a really decent price? Well, it can actually be a problem, and that's partly what I'd like to talk to you about now and illustrate with a case of cotton. So at the Environmental Justice Foundation, we've been running a campaign on cotton for the past couple of years, and we released two reports, which you can find in our stand in the green zone. Uh, White Gold, the True Cost of Cotton, about cotton production in Uzbekistan. And Deadly Chemicals in Cotton, Outmining Pesticide Use in the Cotton Industry. And just to brief you as well, we are working on our next report, which will outline the use of child labour in cotton production all over the world. So watch out for that, that will come hopefully sometime in the autumn. So, cotton is of high importance to the fashion industry. And just to, I'd just like to run a quick, quick poll with all of you. Could anyone who's wearing cotton today just raise their hand? And I'll certainly raise mine. So I would say, yeah, 90% maybe of the people in the room? <laughs> maybe more, yeah, there might be some of you who have forgotten some underwear, I'm not sure. Um, so in any case, well, I'd just like to demonstrate for that, you know, cotton is actually something we all wear, whether we think about it or not, we're very likely to wear it. So it's, it's not that surprising if I tell you it's the world's most important non-agricultural commodity. Um, cotton production has doubled in the past 20 years. It's worth, as was pointed out, about $30 billion a year, uh, just at the production level, and it's produced in over 100 countries now. And it's actually of particular high importance to developing countries. It's got essential development and benefits. About 99% of the cotton farmers live in the developing world, and they produce about 75% of the world's cotton production. As an example, in West Africa, you have about 10 million farmers who depend directly on cotton, and then obviously you have a lot of other people who are indirectly affected. But that's not all, as we've <coughs> demonstrated, it's a major consumer product. It affects us all, not the least through the clothes we're wearing. Over half, around 60% of the world's cotton production goes to clothing. Much of this goes to the developed world. The EU and the US imports about 71% of the world's clothing. And with this, you can show directly to the farmers in the fields, to the consumers in the West. So what are the issues then? Why are we so concerned about cotton? Cotton is always portrayed as a very natural product, very nice and very gentle. Well, unfortunately, there are quite a lot of issues around cotton, which I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of those that we've covered at EDF. So let's start talking about cotton. Cotton has been labelled the world's thirstiest crop. It requires large amounts of water both for cultivation and for processing. Over half of the world's cotton fields are irrigated. It's been estimated that a total of about 10 to 17,000 litres of water is required just to produce one kilo of cotton lint. Just to produce one cotton t-shirt just takes about 2,000 litres of water. Just point out that's from the field level through all the production stages, but it, still it, it's a lot. In total, global cotton consumption has been estimated to be responsible for about 2.6% of the global water use. But most of that impact is felt in the country of origin of the cotton, so not necessarily here where most of the cotton is being worn. It's been estimated that about 84% of EU cotton-related water footprint lies outside of the EU, in particular in Uzbekistan and India, which are obviously as well major cotton producers. Then we have pesticides. Cotton has been called the world's dirtiest crop. Over two billions worth of pesticides are released on cotton every year. Almost half of this value is toxic enough to be classified as hazardous by the World Health Organization. 
A pesticide, as we know, they're hazardous by design. They are designed to kill, repel, or inhibit, inhibit growth of living organisms. And in many cases, these effects will affect humans as well, not just the pests, which is particularly true of insecticides, out of which cotton accounts for about 16%, which is more than any other crop. Almost one kilo of hazardous pesticides is applied for every hectare under cotton. Just note that this is an average, so in some countries there will be much, much more. And this obviously has huge impact on the developing world when most of the cotton is produced. Health awareness is low, resources are limited, protective gear often unavailable or unaffordable, illiteracy, you, you can imagine. Just to give you some example of the dangers faced by people working on cotton, just one single drop of the pesticides aldicarb absorbed through the skin can kill an adult. And this is a pesticide that's very, very wildly used in cotton production. Another commonly used pesticide, endosulfan, has been linked to at least 37 deaths in one cotton season alone in Benin in West Africa. It's been estimated that cotton cultivation represents around 50% of all pesticides supplied in developing countries. And the bulk of pesticide poisonings also occur in the developing world scenario, including an estimated 99% of pesticide-induced deaths. And additionally, you also have the natural environment, particularly global freshwater resources that are affected by pesticides. <coughs> then we come on to child labour. Cotton production also relies heavily on cheap labour, and many of these are children. Uh, the International Labour Organization estimates that there are around 280 million child labourers in the world. And contrary to what most people believe, these children don't necessarily work in factories. 70% of them work in agriculture, in the fields. And this includes the cotton industry, where children are employed in a variety of tasks, from cotton seed production, to pesticide spraying, to picking the annual cotton harvest. We don't know exactly how many children are working in the fields, but what we do know that in most countries that produce cotton, there will be children, and in some, the numbers are significant. Just to give you some illustration, in Egypt you have an estimated 1 million children between 7 and 12 years of age who every year work to manually remove pests from cotton plants. In India you have hundreds of thousands of children working as many as bonded labourers or children that's been trafficked across borders to work in cotton seed production. Most of these are girls. In Central Asia, you've got school children who are taken out of school to go work on the cotton fields for months. And the data for the field are obviously substantial. You've got really, really hard labour, you've got pesticides, you've got a number of other dangerous situations faced by these children, some as young as seven. In particular, in terms of pesticides, we just heard how much pesticides cotton use. This is a particular danger to children. They're more vulnerable, they're smaller, they'll be affected more than adults, and they've got developing organs. So working with pesticides for them it will definitely have an impact for the rest of their lives. And the children are often working because they're cheaper, they work hard, they're easier to negotiate with, they're easier to control. And in some cases, direct linkages have been made to the prices paid in the market. It's simply not affordable to pay adults. So I'd like to move on just to give you a case study about Uzbekistan, which is one of the, the key areas that we've been working on so far. Uh, we've released one report about Uzbekistan, White Gold. We've got a film going with that, a short documentary. It's about 80 minutes long. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have shown it here, but I can't because we don't have the facilities. But if you go to our stand down in the green zone, you can see it there, and you can also see it on our website. So do, do come by, and we also got loads of other materials, including our reports there. So we'd love to see you all there.